I've never been one for collecting seekers. I see the appeal, but it's never really been for me until now. Bumblebee movie seekers, I just really like, like a lot. And when Starscream came out, I was so excited for it and it held up mostly. Then I made that short asking people which one they thought would make the best studio series seeker mold. And that question got answered almost a year later with Thrust. And he was even better than Starscream, even though he was the same toy with some slight differences. Let me know in the comments down below which one you think wore the mold better, because I am curious. Now, Thundercracker came out and I wasn't expecting it to be better than Thrust in any way, shape or form, but it blew me away. Even though it's the same toy, it just seems to be the one that makes this mold shine the most. And what's funny is that my favorite Bumblebee movie studio series toy is this Thundercracker. And the other Thundercracker is my favorite Bayverse Studio Series toy, even though he didn't even show up in the movie. So I find that, I just find that funny. Starting in alt mode, because, well, why the hell not? The breakup of blue and gray just works so well here. I like the placement of the wings in the back of the jet, but I wish there was a little bit more red on this guy. It's just on the nose and a bit on the wings. It looks a little bit plain. The swooping angles and the sharp edges flow pretty well together, but the wings droop down a bit further than the undercarriage cannon part, making standing up the jet a bit precarious, but it's not horrible. The thruster detail is separate from the legs, like it's two parts that makes it feel more like two sections of a jet rather than just painted detail, because I could easily see them just doing that because it's cheaper, but here they actually put the effort in and it's nice. It's a large jet too, both tall and in wingspan. I will say on all of them, the bottom wing is a bit messy. I know the arms have to go somewhere, so it makes sense, but it does look a little bit off. That and on thrust, the cannon likes to fall off, but that's just thrust. That made getting this shot very difficult. I really like how the entire vehicle mode is all enclosed. Like there's no gaps or bits poking out that make the alt mode feel unfinished, other than maybe the bottom gun, but the back specifically is really clean in the way that everything just sort of wraps around. It wraps around so unnaturally at first, but it works and it makes it really clever and interesting to do. They just look so good together and I must have more. There are more secret colors we saw in the film, so please Hasbro make more, I will buy them all. Transformation does so many things you don't expect and it's the most fun transformation out of any of the Bumblebee Movie Studio Series toys for me, even more fun than Ratchets. So I remember when this idiot first came out and everyone was expecting it to be like this and then we got it and it, it it's definitely not that. Um, it, it does a lot of really interesting things to accomplish its transformation and like just the way that it holds together is very neat. Um, to start with, you remove the gun. I love that, by the way. I love how the hand cannon is actual like part of the alt mode and it's like a piece of weapon storage on like this guy's where it just sort of is underneath the jet. I like to take these off too. You don't have to, but it's just easier. And then the wings fold. Now you don't have to worry about the like looseness of these on this guy because they're still loose here, but they stay swooped down. So one of the reasons why I like the swoop down wings a lot more. You split that, you fold the, fold the, fold the, uh, there we go. Hold the cockpit underneath or the nose cone and fold that all up. Then you just get the arms out of the way. And I was really surprised to find out that the entire torso section up here is one solid chunk. It's always nice when the robot has like a core that it's moving around because then at least it can be stable. Flip out the hands. So this is really uninteresting, right? It's just, oh yeah, you flip out the arms, fold up the nose. This is where it becomes super neat. So you untab the back here if it hasn't already and just fold this panel forward. And then this entire section swings around and you fold that in and that just sort of locks it all in place. And that's where the legs are. I'd love how the whole thing just swings. You can't really see that. But I love how the whole thing just swings around and it is a robot all of a sudden. And then the way that like all this tucks in. So it's a lot of flipping, but you flip that, then you flip that in, then you flip that down and then it goes all hides away in the leg. Brilliant. The way that they did all this is just brilliant. And then over here, because it's asymmetrical, because you have the tail fin, that folds up. And then when you fold it around, it just sort of wraps around the leg. And it doesn't look that out of place considering they're both sculpted exactly the same, even though they're completely different parts. And then you just, for some extra detail, it didn't have to do this, but you can, you just fold these little sections out and boom, there you go. It's simple, but it's really clever the way that it does the whole leg fling around and then how this sort of just comes in here and solves the problem that this guy had where it would just constantly come untabbed. Love it. 
downward swooping wings win 100%. I'm sorry, Starscream, but your loose ass wing tips are just bad. And the downward swooping wings here just work better for me. The blue may seem like a lot, but it's not as bad in person as the images make it seem. Front of the legs could use a little bit more gray though, but overall it's not as deep or as vibrant and as plain of a blue as the images and even my camera make it seem. It's a lot nicer in person. With the Blitzwing head and without the cone, it just looks incredible. I much prefer the Blitzwing head over the Starscream one here because it just makes the mold feel more intimidating because of the battle mask. It just doesn't look human, which is what I didn't like about Starscream's head. I'm not a fan of the painted cockpit section because it's right next to the clear soft one and they look disjointed. One's bright yellow, one's not. I wish they stuck to either paint or a clear insert for both parts because it would have meshed a lot better. I love the arm detailing and I find the dark gray on Thundercracker looks a lot better than the light gray on Thrust's arms. The color separation and the part separation on the torso too is so nice. It's actual parts in a lot of places rather than being all paint and the paint matching for the bits that they couldn't use individual parts for, it does the job quite well. I especially love the shoulder pauldrons and the two-tone gray in them. It's really nice. The handgun is still weird. I'm not a fan of how it's held because of how short the peg is and how weird it is in the arm. You can undersling the cannon around if you clip it underneath while I'm folding the hand in, but it's not solid. It's also not the same color at all in comparison to Starscream's. Thundercracker is a lighter gray and blue, and I'm very happy with that. God, these look great together. All three of these look super cohesive, and when you bring in the rest of the Bumblebee Studio Series Decepticon figures, it just, it works so damn well. I find with these Bavers SS toys, they fit well, but not as well as the Bumblebee movie ones because you have toys from 2018 and toys from 2022 and they just don't mesh because Studio Series has evolved since then. But these, they look so pleasing together because they've come out during like the reform of Studio Series where they've got the standardized articulation, the slightly better engineering, the Bumblebee aesthetic just fits with itself a lot better because it doesn't change so often because it's only had one film. Articulation is also amazing, being created after that sort of articulation standard that we now have where he has all the joints you would want. There's a couple of QC things, but it's still amazing to pose. So the articulation is actually quite nuts for a Studio Series toy because, well, it's a Studio Series movie toy and those usually have a track record for being quite limited, but here you've got a ball joint at the head that on mine unfortunately likes to come off a lot when I rotate it. There we go. Once you, you gotta just push it and click it in and he can rotate left and right. He can look up and down a little bit. I wish he could do a little bit more, but eh. Shoulders, full 360, in and out, bicep joints. The elbows because of transformation are single joints but can go all the way up and he has wrist tilt. So you can put a, um, a sword in his hand if you wanted to and tilt it down so you can point it. Now he doesn't look like he has a waist joint at first, but you fold up the crotch flap here and then he does. He has a waist joint. Hips can go forward and back. They can go in and out. You got a thigh swivel. They're also ratcheted in and out. Very soft. I don't think you could hear it. Now you can probably hear the thing shaking on my desk more. Thigh rotation and I love this. This reminds me of Mecha Live quite a bit where you'd like reveal detail and stuff and how it's the double mushroom peg. So that's even better. I love that. Knee bend, 90 degrees, and then the foot can tilt, but there's also some forward and back, especially when you tilt it, then you start to get more forward and back. So while it's not exactly as I would like it, it's, at least it's there, and I like that a lot. Oh, and then the wings can move, and then you can fold them out, and you can rotate them up if you really want to do... Here, that's what that looks like. But I don't, I don't like how that looks. I, I much prefer Thundercracker with the swept down wings. Yeah, he's quite, let me get him into a pose real quick. He's quite posable, and I like that a lot. Yay! So in my opinion, I think Thundercracker wore it better. Thrust is good, but Thundercracker just blows him away. The wing null rays actually stay on this time. The colors seem better to me. The plastic somehow feels nicer. It's got more range in the head because of the, doesn't have the cone. It's just nicer to me. I recommend any of the mold variations though. They're all good because they're technically the same toy. Their prices seem fair too, because you get a lot of toy here for the standard Voyager price, and it's a lot of fun. Let me know again which one you think worked better in the comments below. I'm very curious to know. Just keep it, you know, keep it civil, please. But that's been my look at Studio Series Thundercracker with a little bit of thrust. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.